What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. Casey, there's other music playing. This is not going to do good. Did you did you hit? Are we recording? Yeah. Damn. That's I'm a big I'm big Hanson guy. Sorry. I mean, I just, sometimes well, that's what I, I use that to get pumped up before we before we do this thing. Anyhow, we're here. We're ready to roll. Uh, got a got a fun little conversation for you. Just the two of us, you and I. Yeah. Uh, no big co tonight. So, but we have a we have a fun little question. And try to get in and out of here semi quick. You know that's not going to happen, but because uh, things go long around here. But uh, this was a Patreon question. Uh, <laughs> obviously, hit that subscribe button, thumbs up, all that good stuff. Uh, that that really helps us out. But this was a Patreon question, and then what really made this into a, a whole other video thing was this was something that I was pondering on, and we're talking about uh, Deontay Johnson versus Chase Edmonds here. Um, initially, I thought this would be a strong deal if I could pull off trading my Chase Edmonds for Deontay Johnson. Uh, and he's somebody that I've been chasing after all season. Wasn't a big Deontay Johnson guy to start with. I uh, definitely missed the super cheap window. But after week one, uh, when I saw him making mistakes aplenty out there and still getting peppered by Big Ben, coupled with the fact like he looked like a damn jackrabbit running around out there, made me say, I really have to do something to try to make a play for as much Deontay Johnson as I can, because there's, you know, some, some good talent there and I missed the boat. Agreed. I'm with Um, you. Yeah. All right. So yeah, we really blew it. You know, we weren't big, we weren't big uh, Deontay Johnson fans and we were having to pivot, realize it quickly. But this is, you got to be able to adjust and keep moving. Right. And And, and we realized it quickly. We should go overpay for him. And then there was a couple week period where it got a little cheaper because he was hurt and, then, then Chase Claypool breaks out. She had a little window, a little, yeah. little deeper window, but things slamming shut. For sure. So then, you know, as I started going on before I went and sent that offer over, I just wanted to make sure that I, you know, I like to think things through a little bit. So I started boiling this down to and seeing what could be, you know, in the future here if, to see what Chase Edmonds and Deontay Johnson hold for this offseason and going into next season. Um, Chase Edmonds, obviously, this year in spurts, has seemed like he had taken over that Arizona backfield. Some people thought he had, but then without fail, Drake would come roaring back and look like the cards want to really keep him in the fold, keep him involved. Um, Either way, Chase Edmonds looked really good in whatever role he's had for the Cardinals, however they get it done. Um, Both Drake and Edmonds uh, are RB 22 and 23 on the season with Drake being averaging 22.2 points a game and Chase averaging 12 points a game. So he's just kind of outdoing uh, Edmonds in the overall season there, but both still in the RB two uh, category there. So that's pretty strong. They both haven't really haven't had too many games together where they've been very good. It's kind of been a one or the other deal. Um, but through that time, Chase has been eighth in running back targets. That's pretty strong. Um, especially when considering he's not the the main guy there. Um, but really what it comes down to to me is like Chase is going to get a good run down the stretch here. So obviously there's a little bit of added value, or a lot of added value in this little stretch run with Drake being out a, a few weeks. We're not really sure what that, what that entails, how long he's going to be out. Could be, could end up on IR after the buy, could say, hey, he's only going to miss a week after that. We don't really know. Um, But what we're going to see is we're going to get a good look at Chase being kind of by himself. I'm sure they'll get somebody else a little bit involved. But what really is driving a little bit of this decision here is or or thought process is, you know, you saw what could happen after they traded for Drake and Drake had a couple of good games. um, And it really strongly affected his ADP in in such a positive way last offseason with just a couple of games. And like the whole spectrum of what he did wasn't great in that stretch at the end with Arizona, but he had a couple of really good games and there was already some Drake uh, fanboys out there. Um, so let's get down. Drake's ADP around through, through the off season last year um, was July. He was 28th and by August 29th. So it, that's overall. So around like the two, five, two, six, two, four area was where he was floating around. And that's, that's a lot of value 
uh, on the running back. And, you know, Drake's only on a one-year deal, uh, while Chase remains on his rookie deal next season, which means he's going to be super cheap and beneficial to the Cardinals, especially because for the first time in a long time, the cap is projected to go down. Uh, so as we've been going up every year, up and up and up, and the salary cap could be an imaginary thing sometimes, it seems, almost, for certain teams. Um, the, the cap is supposed to go down. So that another positive thing in the check marks of Chase Edmonds. Um, and then you just, you know, you look around next year, and with Chase being the incumbent for the Cardinals next season, and you don't know what they're going to do. They could easily sign a 2 $3 million veteran like a Carlos Hyde. Uh, but – you could easily see an ADP spike to the second or third round like you did with a Kenyon Drake. And, you know, Drake's – people want Drake to be good for so long. So, you know, there is something to be said for that. But if Edmonds comes in, has a good run here with the spotlight on him and had a good season before that, his overall ranking will look really good by the end of the season. There will be some good points per game sprinkled in there. And you can go back through the game log in the beginning of the season when he was spitting time if he goes on and crushes this role. And, and Drake may never get back. Drake might be the one – might be the, the Robin in this situation by the time he does get back because I've been displaying so well. And, hey, we are only got this guy for a year. You know, maybe they're with the mindset of, hey, we're going to run the shit out of Drake since we only have him for a year. But Or, hey, let's see what we got in Edmonds here for the rest of the season and just kind of let Drake fill in. And, and obviously, as things go, you need everybody, especially in this crazy season that we're having uh, right now. But the biggest thing, again, is, is this Cardinals offense moving forward. Everybody is going to seemingly want a piece of this. You got Kyler entering his third year next year. You got Kingsbury in his third year next year. And, you know, the third year in quarterbacks is when, you know, Mahomes said that's when he finally started kind of seeing and reading defense is better. Russell Wilson has said on multiple occasions, like things just really started to slow down and click in that uh, period in time. So it could be a, that's a, typically a big marker year for all sorts of different skill positions, but especially the quarterback. Um, and the cards have had some up and downs performances this year, but with a guy like Kyler at the helm, D hop holding down the wide receiver one position, Christian Kirk emerging as a real threat and trust the old Larry Fitz. This is an offense that's going to be, extremely hard to defend and could easily be a, you know, a 30 point per game offense and, and, and with weeks of, of more and, and, you know, dare I say, you know, have a little bit of chiefs to him where you want a little piece of every bit of this offense. And you know, that the big thing is always the Cardinals, you know, want to run a little bit faster tempo and run, want to run more plays, which is good for anybody on, you know, getting fantasy points there. Um, and they want to so, spread it out, which is where Chase really excels. Right. So, so it, it seems like there are a lot more positives in Chase's bank here that uh, you know made this started making this more of a tough decision for me to even send out Edmonds. Um, and I'm not in that particular league. Some things didn't go my way, so I'm probably not making the playoffs. Um, so, you know, I could sell. I could sell, obviously, but. Uh, the run for Chase right now isn't going to do me any good. I haven't really been playing him all year. He can stay on my bench, um, but it would really help, you know, the guy who has Drake out, obviously. So, I, and he's the guy who has Deontay Johnson. So, all these things kind of line up for me, uh, but which led to this conversation and, and led to me thinking, you know, next season there there could be so much value on Chase Edmonds. It's not hard to make a case for Chase. Um, he does less with more. You know, you mentioned the stats of him and Drake, and he. He's uh, done. He's been much more efficient. Now they're not necessarily ready for Chase Edmonds. They're preparing for Kenyon Drake defenses. That is, when Chase gets in there, you take a little breath of fresh air and you look at what the wide receivers got going on. So he's not going to have that benefit anymore. Certainly for a portion of the season, anyway. I think possibly but, there. But there's already like rumblings of him taking that starter job, and then Kenyon had mm -hmm. that good game and kind of held on to a little bit. But it's not that crazy to think that he's going to take over this job for this year. And then could be the man next year. So I get, I get all right. that. I understand it. Um, well, let's go. Let's take it over to the Deontay. Yeah, Johnson side I mean, like I said, I started this trade off thinking, and this whole piece off kind of thinking like, oh, it's Deontay Johnson. And you know, obviously, I stated in the beginning of this thing, I, I missed it, and I really want some Deontay Johnson. But you know, I, I'll let you have the floor since I just talked at a rapid pace through the through the chase thing here what uh what's what's the, uh, follow too closely I <laughs> some the more. the cloth walk I spread some <laughs> yeah. more well uh, running a red uh, light while changing lanes in an elevated intersection and speeding is that all no parking tickets <laughs> no <laughs> all, all right, right give me some give me some deontay johnson love of, of why you know he seems like the safest best bet in this deal and 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 why why he is so sought after 
He's a potential stud. He looks like a jack, jackrabbit. He's twitchy as hell. He looks like he can get open anywhere on the field. He was making all those mistakes in game one, lost a fumble, dropping balls, and they still were peppering him with targets. Like, that wasn't a red – like, if that wasn't a fire in, in the middle of the field, like, to see that this dude is really good, I don't know what is. Um, looking through Twitter, uh, Scott Barrett had a tweet out with some, some uh, info that's going to support my opinion here, so I'm going to use it like it's the uh, end-all, be-all. Um, he uh, So, take into account the fact that Deontay Johnson left week three with a concussion – and week five with a back injury, and in those games only had one and two targets respectively, went out kind of early. Um, if you take those games out, uh, he'd, he'd be averaging 21.3 points per game, which would be third best overall, and he'd be number one in targets per game with 13. Let's go ahead and count those two games. He still has eight targets a game, and that's with just one and two in two of those games. So he's a target behind Juju who leads the team with 42 um, he's, he's credited with six starts to Johnson's five. And like I said, in those five games, he left early and like, so he's, he's just a volume magnet. Um, so that's basically three games that Johnson's fully played and is still, and as a, as a target behind Juju. Right. Right. Um, let's look at the Steelers, right? So he's got another potentially dominant player in Chase Claypool across from him. I think that helps him. Right. For sure. um, I, don't, I don't know that he's the, the, the true number one stud. Clay, Clay Definitely like not. He is, but like he looks like he could thrive in this number two role. And I mean, he does have some appeals like an Anto- Antonio Brown kind of guy who can get open at any level of the field, can make big plays. He's twitchy and the Steelers know what they're doing. They're drafting wide receivers out the yin yang. Um, Juju mentioned him. He's in a contract year, so. Don't know what's going to happen next year. I could see him bringing him back, but you mentioned the cat being lowered. I, he could be gone, and they could roll with Deontay and Claypool as two young studs coming up, and that's just going to be more targets for for uh, for my man Deontay. But the question is, the only really question is, is what's up with Big Ben, right? Sure. He's old. He's 38. Quite possibly the ugliest quarterback in the league. <laughs> he's, he's a bit of a drama queen. He likes to play up injuries. I mean, I wouldn't put it past this man to retire and come back a bunch of times like Brett Favre did and just be a headache, right? But yeah. what's going to happen? They have a Super Bowl caliber team. The offensive line is good. The defense is awesome. They have a running game, crazy wide receivers, no distractions anymore. Big Ben's the man. They could easily win a Super Bowl this year. What does he do? Does he does he ride off into the sunset? Like, what did you say, a mythical creature? Or yeah. does he fill it up again? And it's like, ah, trying to figure out what that guy's thinking, there's no way. So that, that gives me a little bit of pause. But, I mean, the fact that Deontay's still a potential stud and combine that with the fact that we've gone through this before so many times. Drew Brees, when's he going to retire? How does this affect Michael Thomas' value? How does it affect Kamara's value? I missed out on Michael Thomas because I was worried about Drew Brees retiring. Turns out Michael Thomas is going to be fine no matter what. Well, I don't know what's going on with Michael Thomas right now, but there's a lot of rumblings that he's just a real dickhead and they don't want to deal with him anymore. So, but yeah, I don't know. Really? But yeah, some some weird stuff going on and saying maybe he – Maybe he was hurt. Maybe he wasn't hurt. Maybe he was hurt, but they're they're trying to they don't, they don't they're not really loving him because everybody on the team like his Twitter handle is can't guard Mike. And there's some people that were saying you know it's basically can't stand Mike. Like <laughs> yeah, is that just Devonte Parker? Because I know they had a beef. <laughs> I don't well, know. This is Devonte. Anyway, anyway, injection. either way. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail this conversation. I didn't know that though. But you know, on the field, I, I don't. I would. I'm going to give Bennett, Michael Thomas benefit of the doubt in that scenario. But uh, when he's on the field, he, it's hard to guard Mike. Um, but you know, looking at looking at these quarterbacks that were wondering when they're going to retire, it's like, man, I'm just going to like. And when you look at Chase Evans, we're talking about this year and next year. We didn't look any further than next year, and the same thing could be said for Deontay Johnson, except you're still going to have a really good sure. player as opposed to a 26-year-old running back who mm-hmm. doesn't have a bunch of crap capital and all this. Um, so I, I like the Steelers organization. I like what they have going on. Deontay looks like a potential stud, and he just seems really safe. He just seems like a safe play, and I think I, I understand like Chase is a gamble, but it could pay off. And if, if maybe you're not playing for a bunch of money or depending on your style, I mean, if you like to gamble, I can't be mad with you taking Chase. Um, and I, and yeah. I can see scenarios where Chase would be better. And in redraft, I'd trade you Deontay Johnson to get Chase Evans for the rest of this year. But in, in Dynasty, I just think that Deontay is the safer 
uh, long-term play as well as has a potential ceiling too. So, so there's definitely yeah. floor and ceiling with that man. So I don't know. What are you thinking? You, you, you taking chase? Yeah, this is, this is tough. I've battled all around with it. I mean, there, I think there's definitely the, the safest play is definitely to take Deontay Johnson. You're not losing if you take Deontay Johnson in any way, shape or form. Obviously, like you said, there could be a quarterback issue and we don't know what Ben's going to do. Could be a year, could be two years, could be three years. I don't know. Who the hell knows? You know, just had basically Tommy John surgery, um, which, you know, is kind of a new thing for quarterbacks for the most part. Uh, we, we don't really know. Like you said, they could win. There's a lot of up in the air there. And, and we just – the Steelers are, are a pretty good organization, so you'd like to think you feel pretty safe with your assets over there. But it's just getting a quarterback is hard. You know, you don't transition, you know, smoothly like Herbert to Rivers to Herbert and Peyton to Luck you know, very often that's, it's fairly rare. Usually there's some gap years where, which Deontay Johnson could be fine. Cause he's a volume type of receiver. And that, you know, if you got a shitty quarterback and maybe the targets aren't as good, but the, the volume could still certainly be there for, for a guy like that. Um, but man, just me being the running back guy, we're a running back podcast. Like, you know, I really, you know, I want running backs on my team. I want to take, get as many as I can, you know, that's, that's my favorite and has been my best way to win championships to have three or four great running backs on your team. Um, but you know, it's, it, it can come and go really quickly with running backs. Um, right. a lot of know, them so, flashing the pain. So you're only you usually looking at abs. You have to right. keep taking stabs because when you find one that can score a bunch of points, that's how you win. And so like, right. you know, if you're trying to win now, which you should probably be trying to win. Like, don't take, right. just don't punt on your team because I'm building this dynasty for the future. Like, you gotta, it's so hard to win one, much less become a dynasty. Don't sell yourself short. Like, be honest with yourself. There's so many people out there that are like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm years away from competing and I, I'm just, I'm, I'm like, just rebuilding. Everybody's always rebuilding. Yeah. They're the smartest Good person point. in the world. And it's like, just, it's like that, that, that definitely weighs in Chase Edmonds' favor. And I think you should, you know, be a little bit aggressive and try to win, especially when people are trying to like basically lose. Um, yeah. and, so and again, it plays oh, into that maybe being a better now player. A lot of if, this can weigh into how your roster is currently set up, what, what, you, right. what your needs are, what, what you have. If you're dominant at the other position, then, you know, obviously the other guys are better uh, deal. I'm kind of balanced at both positions. My running back, I did, I've been retooling the running backs a little bit here, so I'm pretty young with some guys that I like. Um, and Chase just seems like he could be a good – you know, I have Mike Evans. I have Devontae Adams. I have Cortland Sutton. Uh, I had I, I took Mims this year. I got Sterling Shepard. I got Darius Slayton. I got, you know, all sorts of players that I can plug in in, in this league. So I'm not hurting for – uh, receivers and I always feel like you can add a running back and he, he's just somebody that I drafted so this isn't like a new league I've I had him since the rookie draft um, so it's like you know again you know I typically aren't, don't look at running backs in any more than a two or three year window if they're not like considered the elite running backs anyway uh, you know you're trying to work in that in that framework so I think I am actually leaning uh, Chase Edmonds here for for myself and in general like, I think I'm going to take the gamble on Chase Edmonds. I like where, where he could be. I want a piece of this Cardinals offense. He seems like he could be a huge piece moving forward. Now, certainly they could draft somebody else, you know, pretty high, but it seems like they have some other team needs, and they seems like they should spend some money elsewhere. If you can get it done with Chase Edmonds and, and, a, and a veteran that costs two, three million, one million, maybe, you know, Benjamin steps up in this role and you look, you're ready to roll moving forward and you draft a late rookie in the next – uh, draft and he's you know you kind of build him behind Chase Edmonds a little bit let him hang right. out and get some next, carries here and there next year the rare year that the cap's going down you nailed it earlier it, it makes sense for the Cardinals who have other needs at, um, at plenty of other positions to to just roll with the cheap ass running back who has a chance to prove that he can handle this load moving forward so it'd be interesting yeah. to see as much uh, as I've been trying to hunt down Deontay Johnson, I might have punched the ticket here to get it because, like I said, the, the the scenario with him having Drake and he's a good team. He's he, he's you know pushing for the playoffs, so I'm sure I could squeeze him for as much value as I possibly could uh, for this particular player. But I mean, I think I think I'm going to hold. All right, well there you there you have it, folks. Uh, thanks for tuning in and listening. If you you know hit us with a comment, tell us what you think. Get mad and tell me I'm dumb. Get mad. Just don't hit the thumbs down button. All right. 
Yeah, thumbs up, subscribe. All appreciate it, guys. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time.